Hello, this is Paul from Foster Tech. In this video, let's prove uh, the result 4.4.1 uh, converse of the theorem 4.4.4 is false. Uh, it says, or we say in this way, if the run scan is zero, identically zero, and uh, then no conclusion. Okay. Uh, first, uh, let's review what is the theorem 4.4.4. It's just like this. Theorem uh, says if the run scan is not zero, okay, then uh, the function should be linearly independent. Run scan is not zero, then uh, linearly independent. That's the theorem we learned before. And the converse is just this. Is the converse okay? Go backwards, go backwards. Uh, the converse is not true, so this is not true. It means, uh, if the functions are linearly independent, um, we don't know if the run skin is zero or not a zero, or probably, uh, is zero, okay? Or another way, so let me show another that the converse. Or in this way, um, the opposite of the first, which is equal zero, and then we get uh, the opposite of the linear independence is linear dependence, and here is the same also converse, and therefore the converse is also not true. Right? The converse is not true. Uh, so how do you say this? Uh, the run scan is zero. Therefore, we should get two conclusions. Either the functions are linearly dependent or linearly independent. See, and then let's put here. Or we can get this. If uh, the run scan is zero, then both uh, this dependent independent are possible okay so this is the one okay we need to prove uh, i'll give it two examples i set up one example if the run scan is zero and then we get the functions are dependent okay these are the most cases i give a real case uh, if the run scan is zero and the function are linearly independent so therefore, both are possible, right? Okay, so the first example. Uh, let's give it this. The first function is x. The second function is x2. Okay. Uh, of course, let's just give uh, the domain x belongs to negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, this is the domain. Uh, of course, these two functions are continuous and also differentiable, right? The first derivative will also continue. And therefore, the condition holds for uh, the theorem 4.4.4. And in this case, see, very easy. So we can get uh, what is the run scan? The run scan is this determined. So x, x. Divisible, right? Which is a one and a one. A definitely equal zero. Identical equal zero constant function for any x belongs to the real number. Um, and also we get a linearly independent, uh, linearly dependent, right? So this is a linearly dependent case because f one equals f two, right? So f one is a linear component of f two. So the first example, so therefore, see, we get a what? So we get a, this is the possible. And the second case, we get a linearly independent also possible. Let me give the second example now. Okay, so these are two functions. The first is x times the absolute value of x. The second is x with the second power. And the domain is uh, uh, from negative infinity to infinity to positive infinity. 
I will look at these two. <clears throat> what is the first? The first is a piecewise function, right? So uh, I draw a graph for what is f1. Easy to get f1. Should it be a piecewise? The first is x squared. The second is a negative x squared, right? And therefore, the graph, see, is like it. Is symmetric, right? So we know uh, this function is differentiable at any point, even at a zero, the origin. Okay, the derivative is zero, and uh, also the derivative is uh, continuous, right? So therefore, the condition holds. So this is f one, and we can find the derivative. What is f two? So f two is like. A, okay, so this is f two and this is f one. They can we see easier to find that these two functions are completely different, right? So therefore, they are not a scale multiplication of each other, but not a parallel. So f1 and f2 are linearly independent. And the second, let's look at the run scheme. What is run scheme? Uh, to find the run scheme, I have to divide it into two cases. The first case, when x is greater than zero or equal to zero, the second case when x is less than zero. See, uh, the first, the round scheme should be this, okay? Right? Okay. And the, in this case, are the same. The two rows are exactly the same, so it's zero for all. Okay. So for all x belongs to negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's identically zero. And the first case, what the second case? Again, the second case is the same almost. See, the run scheme this time equals negative x squared for f1, this is f2. The derivative therefore is negative 2x, and here is 2x. Okay, so what do we get? Um, so we get uh, the columns. So the two columns are proportional, and the first equals zero because the two columns are proportional. Or the uh, two columns are the same. Okay, so here the two columns are proportional, therefore equals zero two, and then also I guess balance. Um, we don't need to say okay. So for all I guess of balance, the first uh, uh, have to change a little. See. For x from zero to infinity, this is from negative infinity to zero. Uh, the first uh, zero is included. Means what? Means uh, no matter x is what number, okay, in any real number, the range can always equal zero, identically equal zero, right? So I have this result equal zero, identically, and then also. Uh, the two functions are linearly independent because we just saw the two graphs are completely not parallel. And you see, uh, that's the two examples. That's all. Thank you.